Welcome. I, uh, welcome, everyone. It is uh, good to have you with us. Things are moving a little bit oddly in the Bloomfield household this morning. We'll just say that. Um, without going into any great detail, it's not necessary. <laughs> the dog's included in that. <laughs> And I'm so happy that you are all with us this morning um, for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Um, letting my dog take a drink of water while I catch my, try and organize my thoughts. Um, and also uh, welcome a few more people on here. Um, As usual, at the beginning of our worship services, we take time to welcome everyone, which I do welcome, and to uh, offer time of sharing and announcements. Um, I don't have a whole lot in the way of announcements myself this morning, except to uh, let you all know that next Sunday is Palm Sunday, which I'm still coming to terms or trying to wrap my head around the fact that we're, we're already there. Um, certainly, well, it is spring now, isn't it? hoping everyone's having a happy day. Um, anyway, so next Sunday is Palm Sunday, so I'm not sure, I'm still working on exactly what that service is going to look like, but I would invite anyone who's ready to do so to uh, to get, well, I don't know that you'll have any palm branches you can you can uh, get your hands on, but um, even if you cedar boughs or something that you can wave as some part of um, our celebration of entering in in parade um, from home because <laughs> i imagine we'll be doing something along those lines so uh, if you can if you want to find something that you can use to participate in that kind of intro that would be great and i am also uh, still working on services for holy week um, that will include some form of monday thursday and there will also be a good friday uh, service in which we uh, remember the crucifixion. Um, that will be online at um, 11 o'clock on Friday morning. So, uh, and then of course we will have our uh, Easter Sunday service online. So I, uh, I look forward to you being able to be a part of all of that. Um, just looking here to see if there's Yes, um, we are selling hydrangeas again. So if, uh, if anyone is interested in purchasing a hydrangea, please uh, give Sharon Flagel a call. The information's in the email that went to the congregation. They're $20. Okay, yes. I know it went out in the email. I just like to make a reminder. Um, as we... Uh, continue with our uh, sharing and our announcements. Let us uh, take also time to listen to this Ministry of Music provided by Gail. Thank you, Debbie, for uh, reminding us that uh, yesterday was Norma Eady's 104th birthday. But, uh, yes, she is an amazing lady, and uh, 
I certainly want to send it out there. So hopefully she hears it one way or another. Happy birthday, Norma. It, uh, and all the very, very best. Um, if that's all we have for announcements and for uh, sharing, let us uh, enter into our time of worship. And as we light our candle, let us join in singing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Before I begin and go into our call to worship, I want to just call attention to Louise's uh, an announcement that there are two sets of Easter signs for anyone who wishes to join in our photo montage. And I hope everyone wants to be part of this photo montage, which we will uh, include in our service on Easter Sunday. Um, it's an opportunity for us all to see everyone's faces. Um, so please uh, get in touch with Louise about a uh, sign if you need some help with the photos and also if you just want also a good sign to uh, hold up for that picture um call to worship come and seek god with your whole heart meditate on christ's teachings fix ourselves on the way of, of christ and delight in god's holy word come and worship god let us pray. Loving Jesus, high priest of our hearts, draw us close to you so we may glorify you and proclaim your goodness in all that we are, all that we do, and all that we say. Amen. Amen. And now let us join in singing, Will You Come and Follow Me? Number 567 in Voices United. Will you set the prisoner? 
sinners free and never be the same. Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as the unseen? Will you use the now to meet you and you in me? Will you love the you you if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Christ, you summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. We take time now for our prayer of confession as we bring before God those ways that we continue to struggle, where we continue to work very hard to find our way in God's world in a loving way, but sometimes fall or stumble. And yet we also take time to acknowledge that God continues to love us, forgive us, and walk with us. Let us pray. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, remove our transgressions, take away our iniquity, and smooth the paths that will lead us closer to you. For we know that the brokenness of the world is all around, separating us from your creation and each other. We are born into corruption, you desire all of creation to know the truth that we are one in our inward beings. Teach us this wisdom in our secret heart so we can celebrate with gladness our reconciliation with you and your creation. Create in us a pure heart, O God, and put a reconciling spirit within us. Do not cast us away with your creation from your do not cast us away from your creation and do not take away Take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore your wonderful creation and sustain your covenant with all earth. Amen. Amen. Be assured that God lives deep within our hearts. They will never leave us. They will forgive our iniquity and no longer remember our sins. Amen. Amen. And now I uh, invite Ellie to come here and share with us today her ministry of music. I was working on a song for the last two weeks and then this morning I thought oh I better tune my guitar and I forgot that capo was on it and now my guitar is so out of tune it might take me another two weeks to get it back so this is not the song I had planned to sing but I hope you enjoy it I'm just a poor Wayfaring stranger Traveling through This world of woe There is no sickness Toil or danger In that bright land To which I go 
I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there no more to roam. I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. I know dark clouds will gather o'er me. I know my way is rough and steep, but golden lie just before me where weary eyes no more will weep i'm going there to see my loved ones they said they'd meet me when i come i'm I'm only going over home. Now those dark clouds, they hover o'er me. But I'll be home in a little while. And God's sweet love, it will serve me and he will walk with me each mile i'm going there to see my savior i'm going there no more to roam i'm Thank you, Ellie. Two passages of scripture this morning. The first is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. A new covenant. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. And I also read from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 30. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. 
Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for, the, it is for this reason that I have come to you this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, This is the voice that has come for your sake, not for mine. May these words be blessed to our understanding. And I have a, a video again this week. And uh, this one is uh, provided by Ellie. Jeremiah was not a popular man. He said a lot of things that people didn't want to hear. This made them angry. He talked about the destruction of the great temple in Jerusalem. The temple was an important religious place, so people did not want to hear about that. He also said that people would lose their homes and be forced to leave their communities. Well, no one wanted to hear that either. Jeremiah said so many sad things that he was called the weeping no one wanted to hear what Jeremiah had to say. Jeremiah wasn't just dreaming or imagining that God talked to him about these things. When God talked, Jeremiah listened. And after listening, Jeremiah would share God's message with any when he would listen. Jeremiah was not a popular man. He said a lot of things that people didn't want to hear. This made him angry. He talked about the destruction of the great temple in Jerusalem. The temple was an important religious place, so people did not want to hear about that. I tried. Um, sorry, and I realized, yes, I had muted myself before. Um, I think I'm back on now. And uh, it's one of those unfortunate times. I, uh, as, I was, as I tried to say, but no one was able to hear me because I was muted, um, I didn't take time last night to test to see how it streamed. Um, apparently, this is an issue to, again, um, Anyways, I will upload that video to Facebook this afternoon. So if anyone wants to see the story that uh, Ellie tells with her drum, then it, is, it will be there for you on, uh, on Facebook. Um, but in the meantime, we will proceed with the rest of our service and I won't inflict upon you a poor audio recording. Is it, 
It is, again, one of those mornings. Making sure that I do have my mic on and you can all hear me now. Okay now. Louise, did you mean the video was okay now or that uh, you can hear me now? Okay. <laughs> I think that's from before. Last week, I noted how God keeps entering a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. Covenants through Noah, Abraham, and Sarah, and Moses. Now we hear about Jeremiah. Jeremiah has spent years, decades even, warning the people, the king, the religious authorities, that they are not following the laws of the last covenant. That they have failed to respect the lives and the lives of their neighbors that people are being exploited, justice has been lost, and there is going to be a reckoning. But people are not listening. Those in power, those with privilege, are happy with the status quo. They turn their wrath on Jeremiah. That reckoning is becoming very apparent by the time of today's scripture. The kingdom is being invaded, and the end is close. As much as Jeremiah communicates God's disappointment with the people and the kingdom, Jeremiah still weeps for the people he loves. And here we get to hear that despite the consequences of Judah's disobedience, God has not abandoned them. God continues to love God's people. God offers hope. It is not an immediate rescue, of course. There is a time of great difficulty coming a time of pain and heartbreak, a time of a sense of abandonment. In fact, it may seem God has abandoned the people. But Jeremiah, in these words, offers assurance that God has not forgotten them. God has not abandoned them. There is still hope. The people will be returned to their land, and not just Judah, but also Israel, the northern kingdom that was conquered over a century earlier. Jeremiah reassures his listeners that God's love is constant and God's forgiveness is endless. And with that restoration, God will write a new covenant, this one on the people's hearts. A reminder of God's steadfast love. It says a bit more. That no longer will teaching be necessary. I struggle with this. What does it mean to have God's promise written on our hearts? Does this mean a set of rules or boundaries we all hold deep inside of us? I don't think so. So what is the covenant written on our hearts? Is it God's promise or a guarantee that we are forgiven? That God never gives up on us? That we hold that promise, that grace in each and every one of us? I wonder if Jeremiah is witnessing the breakdown of institutions the seats of government, the priests increasingly failing to protect and guide the people. I wonder if it is possible he is witnessing the people as they face the invasion of their land, losing faith in their leaders, that they don't trust all that is said to them. That as the people entrusted with maintaining a relationship between the kingdom and God stumble and fall in their responsibilities, people are left questioning who they can turn to for assurance of God's love. And so Jeremiah says God's promise, God's vision of who they are and who they can be is marked inside them. That they do not need to turn to powerful officials to know God loves them and God forgives them. That promise, that hope, lies within them. 
past covenants are found in rainbows and stars or inscribed on stone tablets. For the ancient Israelites, the heart was that place from which they thought and felt and acted. They will be reminded of this covenant, this promise to stay faithful from within with all they did and experienced. We are still called to love and seek justice. We are still called to walk humbly with God. We are still called to create a world of justice where all people are valued as beloved creatures of God. But we are reminded of that from deep inside of us. We are reminded that God does not abandon us from deep within. I suspect we each need to be reminded of that from time to time. God has marked each and every one of us. God has made this promise to us all. One commentary I read asked the question if this covenant has been signed yet. If this covenant has been fulfilled, he speculated, then the need for ministers to teach and guide would no longer exist. Has God fulfilled this covenant to write this promise on our hearts? If so, would we not all be aware of God's promise and also God's deep call to love one another? If that man in Atlanta had God's covenant written on his heart, could he have ever shot and killed eight people? One could also suggest that by writing this covenant on our hearts, our relationship to God becomes extremely personal. And this potentially leads to a religion of individuality. I don't necessarily have an answer to that. Except sometimes I think we don't take the time to truly listen to our own heartbeat. I do not think we always truly believe that we are loved unconditionally by the God who created us in God's image. I think we are sometimes overwhelmed by competing messages that dehumanize other beloved children of God and insist that we put ourselves and our comfort and esteem above all else. I wonder if Perhaps God has written this covenant on our heart, but we don't take time to think about who we truly are and how we relate to the world God has created. We have lost sight of how God draws us all together to create something that is so much greater than its individual parts. And that is why we continue to need a community that loves us, challenges us, guides us, and supports us. A community in which we love our neighbors, supporting and guiding and challenging one another, and helping each other to read what God has written on our hearts. A community in which we truly discover who we are. who we love, how we are loved, and who loves us, and how all of that ties together to nurture us into who God desires us to be. When then we can truly hear what our heart is saying, and how all our hearts together Create a hymn of praise to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay. Let us take time to sing once more as we but also to reflect. Let's take time as we listen to Gail's ministry of music. And then join in singing, In You There Is a Refuge. 
number 84 in More Voices. take time once again for prayer as we come together as a community offering our prayers together prayers that we offer for those who are part of our community our families our friends our neighbors but also prayers for the wider community the wider world of which we are a part Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for your church and its ministries around the world. We pray for your faithful followers, our siblings in Christ. We pray for this community of believers and for all the joys and sorrows we share with you silently or out loud. God, may the law of love written on our hearts become our song as we journey. A song with words that comfort when hardships on the road burden us. A tune that lingers, leaving warm thoughts with those whom we meet on the way. And with a rhythm that lilts 
buoying our spirits and strengthening our resolve to see the journey through. You promise to write your law within us so that no matter where we are, we will always know deep in our hearts you and your ways. Healing God, we bring before you our prayers for those whom we know who are ill and those who are in pain. Those awaiting medical treatment and awaiting diagnoses. Those living with the anxiety of not knowing for sure what tomorrow or the next day might hold. May they know your peace. May they know your comfort. We pray for the people of Atlanta so gravely affected by the shootings this past week. May they know your love through the work of the people in their community. We pray for the people in the overall Asian American community who have experienced so many acts of racism in the past year. May we once again hear your voice within us that calls us to stand up and speak out against racism, against white supremacy, against misogyny. May we continue to voice our belief that we are all beloved children of you, O God. That when we allow harm to happen to any of our siblings, we are harming you. Guide us. Love us, strengthen us. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision, number 642 in Voices United. Yeah.
come to the end of this time of worship. Before we join in our choral response, I offer you this blessing. Go and embody God's song to the world. With your words, sing hope. With your actions, dance peace. With your being, play love. Amen. Now let us join in singing May God's Sheltering Wings as our choral response. And I thank you all for your, your patience and your presence in this time of worship this morning. for joining with us with us today in this time of worship. I hope you have found meaning and comfort and purpose in our words today, in our song, in our prayers, in our presence together. Until we gather again, go with peace and go with God. Farewell.